This latest ceasefire occurred after fighting re-erupted inside Tigray on August the 24th. People are talking about you know, hundreds of thousands of combatant deaths just in this last two months of, of fighting. You then have the region going to complete isolation again. The few humanitarian services that had started up since the, the fighting ended in December, January, since the March truce, you know, they were immediately cut. The prospect of services resuming then becomes more distant and then you have all the devastation that's caused sort of directly by the conflict. So this period of, of conflict has you know, compounded an already incredibly difficult situation for a region of around six million people, most of whom are assessed as, as needing some form of um, humanitarian assistance. And this fighting was not just limited to this area of, of southern Tigray, where the clashes were initially between Tigray forces, but also Amhara regional forces and the federal military. Um, but shortly after that, um, in the north of Tigray, particularly the northwest, we saw Eritrea's military re-enter the war. Um, so really, um, what occurred over the last two months was pretty much a rerun of what happened in Nova November 2020, when the constitutional dispute led to uh, just an intensifying power struggle, what for now has come to an end with this truce on the 2nd of November. There's a few different interpretations of exactly what led to this truce. I think it's a combination of the political, military, and humanitarian sort of economic factors. What, what we know is that during the first phase of this latest round of fighting, this you know, fairly large regional force that the Tigrayans had built up, despite the very difficult circumstances they faced, logistical circumstances, that force was able initially to resist the efforts by the Eritrean and Ethiopian militaries and their allies to sort of move into the region, um, capture major towns, and eventually the regional capital, Mekele. Um, but around sort of a month, you know, six weeks, um, that began to change, um, and it became fairly obvious, um, including by their own admission, that the Tigrayan leaders were struggling to withstand this onslaught. The massed forces against it, including the Federal Air Force and drones, as well as Eritrean artillery. And then we saw the first sort of loss of major, a major city, which was a city called Shire, um, in sort of northern, northwestern Tigray. Um, and although there was continued resistance after that, it did look like the Ethiopian and Eritrean militaries were going to make sort of gains, whether quickly or in a more sort of grinding fashion towards the regional capital, Mehele. Now, for the Tigray leaders, that meant they would probably have to give up on regional government power again and retreat to the sort of rural areas and fight another insurgency. That would have meant further um, devastation and incredibly difficult conditions for the people in Tigray. And although they may have been able to fight an effective insurgency in some ways that make it very difficult for the Eritrean and Ethiopian militaries to take full control, to establish the type of regional administration that they wanted. It wasn't clear at all how the Tigray leadership, the political and military leadership, would have been able to achieve any of their goals um, via that tactic. And those goals were things like breaking the siege, as they saw it. They wanted to make enough gains militarily to be able to break out of this sort of stranglehold that they were under, to be able to bring supplies in, perhaps via Sudan. But you know, with them being on the defensive, the, the prospects of that were not looking good. There was also a major territorial issue with Amhara region um, having taken over a large swathe of Tigray, um, generally known as Western Tigray, um, at the beginning of this conflict um, and Tigray region, Tigray's leaders, they wanted to take that territory back. Um, and that was one of the reasons that they were still, um, were still you know, pursuing a military option. But you know, with the losses that they suffered um, in, in, in October, um, the prospects of achieving those sorts of goals were more distant. Therefore, any further military um, engagement from them meant that they would um, potentially face a very long struggle all the time with the people experiencing those very difficult conditions. Now, it looks like those are the types of considerations that meant 
when the Tigray negotiating delegation went to Pretoria to meet with the federal government delegation, they were almost desperate for a truce because of those very disadvantageous you know, military and economic and political um, circumstances they faced.